and welcome to Tech Law Talks. I am Anthony Diana, a member of Reed Smith's Tech and Data Group. In each episode of this podcast, we will discuss cutting edge issues on technology, data, and the law. We will provide practical observations on a wide variety of technology and data topics to give you quick and actionable tips to address the issues you are dealing with every day. Hello, this is Anthony Diana from Reed Smith. Welcome back to Tech Law Talks and our M365 and 5 e-discovery series, where we explore some of the e-discovery challenges with M365. We are joined today by Damian Murphy from Lighthouse and TJ Satnick from Reed Smith. Welcome, guys. So let's start. You know, one of the things we're going to explore today is Exchange Online and, and specifically how, you know, Exchange Online is not your, you know, normal exchange mailbox um, when it comes to e-discovery. So, Damien, let's start with, you know, one of the things that we hear is that there's lots of different things in an exchange online mailbox. Can you give me a, a sense of what's there and why? Well, Anthony, I, I suggest we could almost start by not calling it a mailbox anymore, right? You think of a mailbox, it's, it's that thing at the end of an American drive with a little flag on it, and inside it is like letters and communications. That's the mailbox. What we have now is a communications library. And just like with any library, you're going to need to know what it contains. And it doesn't just contain email. People know that anyway, right? I mean, anyone who goes into their mailbox goes in and looks at their calendar. They might make some notes. They might add themselves a task or a to-do list. So people are familiar with the fact that there's more than just mail in a mailbox. But over recent years, and in particular with the move to the cloud, what we are seeing is an increasing prevalence of other forms of data that are being that are going into the mailbox. And they're going into the mailbox in a place where you don't see them. So if I go into my mailbox, I won't see that, in fact, within my mailbox, there are Teams chats. There are Teams meeting summaries. There'll be potentially voicemails within there. And none of that will I see when I'm looking at it because it's basically stored in a separate place. But the point to remember here is we've got a communications library, not a mailbox. That, that's fascinating, Damon. And, and obviously makes things really complicated from an e-discovery perspective. So TJ, just strategically, when you're thinking about you know, preservation and, and collection, what are some of the things to think about? Yeah, so I think so one of the choices that uh, everyone's going to have to make here is whether or not you want to preserve and collect the whole mailbox or if you want to undertake a targeted collection. So as Damien just made clear here, there's a lot more data to contend with and there are pros and cons to each one of these approaches, right? So with the targeted preservation or collection, you might miss some of these new items that a regulator or opposing counsel might want to see or feel entitled to receive. Of course, if you preserve and collect the entire mailbox, the data dump results might not be ideal either. So these are just questions that we're going to have to answer. And Damien, when we start thinking about this, right, you're, you're thinking about, okay, I'm going to collect the whole mailbox, whatever. What Say you collect the whole mailbox and you say, okay, now I'm sending it to my vendor. What are the considerations downstream that you have to think about if you're getting all this stuff, as you said, in this library of, of stuff that you're getting? You should be sitting down with your vendor and you should be saying, well, listen, I do know what's in this library and I can tell you what I'm sending you. What I want to hear from you and what I'm going to need to hear is how you can deal with these different data formats. Because some of them are fairly straightforward and people are well used to receiving them. But others are not as easy to look at in review. They're not as easy to process. So I'd say that the first thing you want to do is basically sit down with your vendor and and agree between yourselves that they know what you're sending and that they're ready for it and that they've got some clever and smart way of displaying that when it comes to the time when review needs to be done. So open communications and a knowledge, right? Get deep and get dirty about your understanding as to what's within this communication library. So TJ, let's talk about getting deep and dirty. What are, you, what are your what are your thoughts from a strategic perspective, right? You're getting all this stuff and as you mentioned, you got you know, plaintiff's counsel and the, the regulators are probably thinking about all the different things that are in the mailbox. Strategically, what are, what are you thinking about when you're sort of dealing with this, you know, these downstream implications of having all this extra data in there? 
Yeah, so the traditional search terms, but we could kind of frame this by using my analytics here as an example. So my analytics is a tool that ultimately maps out who you're communicating with and for how much time during the course of your workday. Of course, this might be something that a regulator or opposing counsel might be very interested in, but this isn't going to be something that's going to be picked up by your standard search term methodology. So again, you're going to have to look into new ways to kind of get at, preserve, and collect this information. Yeah, and I think that gets back to Damien's point, which is this this is really complicated and you're going to have to understand them. I think that's going to be one of the major challenges is, is just understanding all of this stuff before you start producing, right? Now is the time to start thinking about this and coming up with your strategy and what you're going to do and what you're going to tell the regulators and all that stuff. Do it now because I think the worst time to do it is when you're rushing to get a production done and you start sending over this stuff. So TJ, like when you're thinking strategy wise, because obviously, as Damien said, there's lots of different stuff in this, in the mailbox, you know, how do you approach that? Yeah, well, Anthony, the way to approach this here is to review each case independently and make a strategic determination as to what needs to be produced in each one of those cases. It's not going to be a uniform process. Yeah. And I, and I imagine that's going to be dictated a lot by what people are requesting and, and the of sophistication of the other side. So Something to keep in mind. Well, thanks, guys. This was really helpful. We're going to have future podcasts on some other topics, uh, other challenges. So hopefully you'll listen in. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Tech Law Talks is a Reed Smith production. Our producer is Ali McArdle. For more information about Reed Smith's tech and data practice, please email techlawtalks at reedsmith.com. You can find our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and ReadSmith.com. And our social media accounts at ReadSmith LLP on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. This podcast is provided for educational purposes. It does not constitute legal advice and is not intended to establish an attorney-client relationship, nor is it intended to suggest or establish standards of care applicable to particular lawyers in any given situation. Prior results do not guarantee a similar outcome. Any views, opinions, or comments made by any external guest speaker are not to be attributed to Reed Smith LLP or its individual lawyers. All rights reserved.